Every day. Every day. Every day. This not for YouTube, Instagram. I be the first one out here every day. Get a little stretch in today, and then I got a couple hundreds, and then I start. Uh, by that time, it'll be time to practice, start workouts with the team and stuff like that. Bruh, yesterday was leg day. Crazy. He had us doing like, uh, we had four sets of four, uh, hang clean, push press, and then front squat. That's one. We had four sets of four, but like, obviously that was heavy. We was going crazy. Tripping. So like, we got rained out or like weather delay or whatever. So um, we had to run in the gym. Trying to kill us. We running suicide. He trying to kill us. I'm like, coach, come on, dog. You here before everyone? Yeah, every day. What time? Uh, I usually start at 8. What time did you practice start? 9. Yeah. 9. Uh, just like how I see it, like, if I do a little bit more than everybody else every day, uh, eventually that's going to set me apart from everybody else. Number one guy at the end of it, at the end of everything. So, like, you feel me? Not not too many guys on that chart y'all look at every day, five stars, four stars, whatever it is, getting up early to practice before practice, staying late. So that's, that's how I see it. Oh man, <laughs> it's too hot. Too hot out here, man. Oh, straight. You been here all four years? Uh, yeah, so this is my second year here. I've been here since freshman year. Going on third, my junior year. But I like it here. This home for real. So, you feel me? Some boys down there getting some work in today. They got a 707 tomorrow, so them boys getting right for the 707 tomorrow. Solid take right here. Solid take. Solid take right here. Just a little bit extra than everybody else. That's it. I'm really giving y'all my secrets because I don't be liking people to know I put in extra money. Yeah, we got a little time. I got these shoes for three, too, man. <laughs> That's the best part of these, huh? Uh, Fast Houston 7 on 17. We got like a Adidas shipment in. So he gave us some lifting shoes. And it doesn't look like we can get wrong. You take it a little bit of time. But you had to at least have like, listen to all of them. Everybody should already be here because we about to start. So Anthony's male influence in his life um, was his uncle Sean and um, 
man, I, what can I say? Like, if I had 10,000 tongues, I, I couldn't thank him enough for the way he stepped up in Anthony's life um, and, and been a, a male role model, a figure, and he's guided him. He's actually the one who actually trained Anthony and got him ready to, um, he, he, he always wanted to run the ball. So, and he went to his uncle Sean, asked him to train and he took him on his wing and he taught him, you know, the ins and outs of football. He trained him and he taught him life lessons as well, not just football, also life lessons. I would go there sometimes and he'd have him mowing the lawn. You know, there's a lesson in that. Um, so like, if there were anybody that really was like made a big impact in Anthony's life, it definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, was his uncle Sean. I remember one time, we was, me and his aunt was standing on the gate and he was about to get the ball, which I didn't know. And I just got this download and it, the download was, it's for your glory. And I usually get those sometimes. And that's when it hit me, like it resonated in my soul that he would do amazing things and that he would go far. And this is bigger than Anthony. So I think that was the, the, the first time that I realized this boy has um, something big to do and a big assignment to do, and um, that was when it, I realized it. I'm on what? What did you just do? No, what did you just do to me? What did you just do to me? Eddie. This dude's gay, dog. What did you just do to me, bro? Man, these boys. Man, these boys. Let me get my way to y'all trying to take me. I'm not a power lift, you know? I play football, so you me? I'll, obviously the weight room translates. <laughs> Whoever brought me was me, regardless. This Michigan State commit right here. I'm trying to be like him when I grow up one day. Eddie Pleasant. <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> Say, uh, what they say, uh, chop, chop, go green, go white. <laughs> go ahead, who's ass go I had two ass go white. Because I remember Ian was going. I only remember two, Coach. We ain't got it like that yet, Coach. <laughs> we ain't got it like that. Come on, Jack. Fucking fuck. Me first. Them dukes. Hey, little Tavoy. 
I say, can you give my shirt? That's Tate, nigga. I call him Lil Tavoy, though. I got a dub on me. I got a dub on me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hand on the white, Drew. Hand on the white, Drew. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. Better not work no nine to five. You say you got 20 on you? Uh-huh. Dude can't beat me. Let's go. Full speed, fellas. Full speed. Down the end, Come on, Tate. Come on, Tate. No, no, no. You're running motion. GGA's on me today. Feel me? And you working out to practice? Oh, uh, yeah. We gonna get some work after this. Fuel my body, and then we good. Most of my days, like, out of front load my days, so, like, from seven, from like seven to around like two, three, like, my days be done. I could pretty much just chill from there. What's your go-to after practice? Chipotle or Smoothie King. I, I had Chipotle yesterday, too. Chipotle and Smoothie King, that's my go-to. I don't really like, I don't really like fast food no more. The only fast food I like for real, for real, is Chick-fil-A. Like, I stopped eating Taco Bell, McDonald's. I don't really like me. I'll eat ice cream from McDonald's, but, like, anything else, nah. Well, I seen the potential in Ant when he was about five years old and he was playing flag football. And he had a determination about him uh, regarding the sport and his willingness to put all his efforts in learning the sport at that age. And um, at that point, I knew that that was something that he would really like to do uh, in a passion of his as a as a five-year-old. And is a hard-working young man. He doesn't allow anything to deter him when he has his mind set on something and achieving it, that's the only thing he has in mind. Once he sets his mind to something, he want to see the goal through. There's never been a goal that I've really seen him come up short on. So for me, the kind of man that he is, is a man that is always willing to push towards the goal and achieve it. What's like a top five artist for you? Uh, young boy number one. Young boy number one? Yes, young boy go number one. Turn it down before you get copyrighted. Uh, young boy number one. I'll probably go little baby number two. Yeah, for sure. I'll probably go no cap three. Four. Four. Who was four? Chicago, Atlanta. Oh, Dirk. 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 <laughs> Dang, no, Dirk before no count. I'm <laughs> Dirk at number three. Uh, no cap at four. Who else? I would say hot wood, but I don't know. Uh, you don't like Yak? That's what I'm thinking about right now. Yeah. Kodak, Kodak gotta be fine. Yeah. He gotta be, because he done dropped Just cause, bro. Yeah, just cause. That's a cool top five, though. That's solid. Oh.
Um, I think Anthony's recruitment has shaped both of us going through this process and the decision making of it all and deciphering through what schools is gonna be best and fit best for Anthony. Um, it has shaped us in a way because this is, this is really big. So we really have to do our homework and really um, pray. We do a lot of prayer about this decision and this whole um, recruitment process. And it has shaped him um, as a man in a way that it's given him like, uh, it's given him the opportunity to like learn life decisions because through life it's about decisions. So that's one of the things that he's gonna have to do a lot in life. So just watching him go through this is definitely giving him a little taste of that. So I don't really remember Anthony's first D1 offer, but I do have one that kind of stuck with me as when he got his LSU offer. And um, I actually got a recording of it. He um, was on the phone talking to the coach and the coach um, compared him to, I guess, I don't, I don't know the, the ball player, but his name was Leonard Fournette. And apparently he's, he's one of the greats because Anthony got really emotional. And to see him get emotional and make that connection of how great he really is and come into that realization of his gifts, um, it, was really, it was really good and just, um, I think it was pivotal for me and him. So Anthony has like this amazing work, work ethic. He actually inspires me. Um, like he makes his goals. He, um, he doesn't take any days off. He's always trying to see how he can be better. And there's really no, the only competition Anthony has is he's always trying to be better than the Anthony yesterday. And it just really inspires me to sometimes when I'm lagging, I see how he goes and he's relentless. And it inspires me to get up and be better than the person I was yesterday. So like, it's, he has amazing work ethic.